okay in the last video we finished at node coverage and edge coverage uh, in this uh, video we are going to look at some other uh, some more definitions of structural coverage on a graph before that we need to understand this concept that for example if there is a, a graph with just one node as shown here it has no outgoing edges to other nodes but for uh, formally to the edge coverage needs to uh, subsume node coverage on this graph and how we are going to make sure that edge coverage is achieved when edge of edge coverage is achieved on a graph like this uh, it also subsumes a node coverage or it, it automatically fulfills the node coverage criteria so if we don't if that does not happen that edge coverage does not subsume node coverage so we need to think about a way and for that we we introduce this phrase uh, define length up to one instead of simply length one so when we say that then uh, it is it means that we want to uh, uh, the edge coverage to subsume the node coverage on this kind of graph also we do not have lengths uh, parts of length more than uh, less than one sorry and this also holds for edge pair coverage and in that case we if we have this kind of graph which just has one edge that is not going to <coughs> ensure that edge pair coverage subsumes edge coverage if we don't include the phrase length up to two so these are two special constructions or special examples which uh, have been shown in this slide to show that uh, how we can ensure that edge coverage subsume node coverage on graphs having just one node and how edge pair coverage subsumes edge coverage on graphs having just one edge so next definition is when we want to cover more than one edge on a graph then what kind of criterion is that so we <laughs> need this kind of a coverage criteria as the edge pair coverage criteria or epc simply and the test requirement in this case contains each reachable node of length up to two and you can just uh, note this phrase of length up to two this has been written to include graphs uh, that have less than two edges so here we have a graph and uh, here you can see uh, <coughs> there are multiple uh, initial nodes and they have edges towards the node 4 and they have the node 4 have uh, a couple of edges going towards node 5 and node 6 the test requirement in this case will be to cover edge pair 1 4 5 edge pair <coughs> 2 4 5 edge pair 2 4 6 edge pair 1 4 6 edge pair 3 4 5 and edge pair 3 4 6 and the logical extension of uh, this criteria is to require all parts to be covered by our uh, test requirement so that gives rise to this definition complete path coverage or cpc so it may it defines that I, the test requirement contains all parts in g now this looks simple but uh, unfortunately this is impossible if the graph has a loop because when we have a structural representation of code and we have a bunch of nodes for example like this and if we have a loop that goes like this then we don't have the number of iterations of the loop mentioned on the structure of the graph so if this is also a valid path one two two this is also a valid path and one two two and so on you can unfold as many uh, iterations of the loop as possible so when the <coughs> number of parts become infinite then it, it is impossible to achieve complete path coverage on that graph so a weak compromise uh, in this case would be that the tester himself or herself decides which parts to cover so such kind of a criterion is called a specified path coverage or spc and what do we mean by that that the test requirement contains a set s of test paths where s is supplied as a parameter by the tester now this also has a drawback because in this case the test requirement will be different from one tester to another 
so it means the uh, coverage criteria no more remains objective it becomes subjective so that is not the goal of testing we want to have criteria that are objective rather than subjective so when we provide a subjective criteria it means it depends upon the opinion of the person who is testing and the opinion can be very different from one person to another so we would like to stick with objective criteria rather than subjective criteria when we are performing the testing of a software so here we have uh, an example a worked out example uh, which covers the topics we have covered so far so we have the initial node uh, one and we have the final node seven and we have uh, some edges that goes from node 1 to 2 1 to 3 2 to 3 3 to 4 3 to 5 4 to 5 5 <coughs> to 6 6 to 5 and 5 to 7 so if we want to achieve node coverage in this case that would mean to cover nodes 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and this you can see would be possible to achieve by these two test parts if we cover part 1 2 3 4 and 7 and then 1 2 5 6 5 and 7 so this covers basically all the nodes so these two test parts are enough to achieve node coverage on this graph now if i want to achieve edge coverage then in that case uh, i i i have to cover this edge 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 and this edge so i have to cover edge 1 2 1 3 2 3 3 4 3 5 4 7 5 6 and 5 7 and 6 5 so this again if you look at the test pass given above uh this can be satisfied by parts 1 2 3 4 7 and, and then 1 3 5 6 5 7 and seven. so this is quite similar actually to the path given in the node coverage so in this case you could see that the test pass given for edge coverage also actually cover all the nodes 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so these also cover the nodes so in the, you can see that edge coverage is subsuming node coverage in this example also the third definition which we studied uh, was of edge pair coverage and here we are looking for length up to two uh, parts so here you can see parts 1 2 3 which is this one then 1 3 4 which is this one then path 1 3 5 which is this one so let me it is some of these so that it becomes uh, uh, a bit more clearer so path 1 2 3 is this one and edge pair 1 3 4 is this one and edge pair 1 3 5 is this one and edge pair 2 3 4 is this one and edge pair 2 3 5 is this one edge pair 3 4 7 is this one edge pair 3 5 6 is this one and edge pair 3 5 7 is this one edge pair 5 6 5 is this one edge pair 6 5 6 is this one and edge pair 6 5 7 is this one so if i want to cover all these edge pairs i need these test parts uh, i taking uh, uh, we are taking 1 2 3 4 7 as was in the node coverage and edge coverage we are also taking the second one uh, 1 2 3 5 7 that is 1 2 3 5 5, 5 and 7 so this basically covers one to only node 6 remains and we have another path 1 3 4 7 that is 1 3 4 7 this one and we now we have covered almost all the nodes and edges what what remains is if you want to see we have covered 1 2 3 that was this edge we have covered 1 3 4 that was this edge we have covered 1 3 we have not covered actually 1 3 5 so we are looking at 2 3 4 that was covered here so this is covered 2 3 5 which is covered here 3 4 7 which is covered here 3 5 6 so this is not covered 3 5 7 it is covered here so this one is covered 5 6 5 is not covered 6 5 6 is not covered and 6 5 7 is not covered so we now we are unfolding or we want to traverse another path that would cover all the remaining edge pairs so we left with 1 3 5 so i will definitely like to traverse this path 
so now this one is covered 3 5 6 so I would definitely go further down so now this one is covered 5 6 5 so I would come back to this one so this is 5 6 5 now this one is covered so this is yet another edge pair 6 5 6 so I will go one more time around the loop so this will cover 6 5 6 also and now when I go back uh, go to the final load 7 then I cover this 6 5 7 also so in this case so the test path is 1 3 5 6 5 6 5 7 so in this way when we go twice around the loop we cover all the edge pairs on this graph so in this way now with these bunch of test paths we have achieved the edge pair coverage and for the complete path coverage uh, it doesn't matter uh, because it will have infinitely many parts because of the number of times you unfold around this loop you will get add more and more parts as you can see here 6565 656565 and so on and if I keep on unfolding the loop I will get more and more parts so that is actually uh, impossible to achieve by any set of tests so as you saw on the previous slide that the covering loops is uh, is a, a difficult thing or an impossible thing when they because it uh, gives rise to an infinite number of parts in the graph but you definitely have to deal with such programs which have uh, loops and you cannot just say that it contains a loop so we, we are not able to test it so complete path coverage is definitely not feasible so we have to think about approaches uh, that actually handle with loops and we said that specified path coverage is not satisfactory because the results uh, were subjective and vary from tester to tester so there have been attempts to deal with loops uh, owing to the problem we just saw in the 1970s the uh, the practice was to execute cycle once as we did in the previous example this is very informal then in the 1980s uh, the uh, definition changed or the coverage of loop chain to execute each loop exactly once so this is a bit more formalized version of the same practice which was carried out in the 1970s and then in the 1990s uh, another uh, way of testing loop was to execute loops zero times once and more than once so this is again an informal description that we want to uh, have tests which would execute the loop just zero times once and any number of time more than once but a very elegant approach was devised in the 2000 which uh, is named uh, as prime parts approach and it makes use of tours side trips and detours and we will see in the next video that how this actually uh, elegantly covers a zero times case the once case and more than once case uh, of executing a loop uh, without actually uh, mentioning this but that we want to cover uh, the loop zero times or once or more than once by just covering prime parts so that's all for this video in the next video i will come back with uh, uh, the topic on prime parts and how do we cover prime parts on a uh, structure of a graph thank you